Okay, so here's our eight pound bone-in shoulder that I was talking about, or butt, however you want to call it. Um, it's already pretty well trimmed. It's got a little sliver of fat there that I'll remove and deal with later. Uh, but it looks really nice. Got that at Kroger. It's very inexpensive. I think it was like $13 for the whole thing. So, cheap. So, what we're going to do is you can make up your own rub. You can do whatever you want. Um, but I've not found any way better than the cheap McCormick Grillmates Memphis Pit Barbecue Rub. It's really good. No MSG. Sugar brown, sugar salt, spices, um, chili pepper, paprika, cinnamon, and thyme, onion, garlic, sunflower oil, and natural hickory smoke flavor. So it is a very natural product and really good. And there's a lot in there for like a dollar. Smells great. Um, so one of the secrets here to getting that stuff to make a nice crust and to really uh, getting the meat to, to absorb the flavor of that is good old yellow mustard cheap stuff. Shake it up good. The real secret of the mustard is it's vinegar based. So it helps uh, break down that connective tissue. And it, since it's a paste, it gives something for the uh, your rub to bind to. It helps stick it to the meat. So just be real liberal with that. Squirt it all over it, and then you're gonna have to get messy and rub it in. And it doesn't really, I don't know that it does much flavor-wise. You would think, oh, mustard, ooh, I don't like mustard. You will never taste it. Um, it cooks into the meat, and that vinegar kinda evaporates out of it, and that's most of the flavor of the mustard. The tartness, if you will, or tanginess, bitterness of the mustard really adds a nice flavor to it, and you don't even, you wouldn't be able to discern it if you're done. So flip it over, do the same on the other side. There's a fat cap on this side. Um, I might trim that off, but it's not very thick, so I'll probably just leave it. Uh, because pork fat, unlike a uh, brisket, that'll render really nicely. So I will put the fat side up in the grill. And it's just barely, on this side it's about Bigger a quarter inch, on this side, side yeah. it's just barely there. So, um, but that will render down. And if you're gonna do uh, pulled pork, that will really add a lot of moisture and flavor because the fat's where the flavor's at to your pulled pork. So, all right, so do that. Rinse it off real quick. Don't worry about washing your hands at this stage because you're still gonna be touching it more. Just gonna get it to where you can get a hold of the package. You're gonna have a dirty towel and you wanna have a clean towel set aside. This is the one you can use to dry your hands between washing. It's gonna be contaminated, so you wanna have different colors so you know. And then just uh, liberally sprinkle this bad boy all over. Make sure you get it on the edges, etc. Pat it in a little bit. Doesn't have to look perfect. Just get it on there. See how useless my left hand is? I can't even sprinkle. My right hand's giving me sympathy sprinkles. Okay, so get it around the edges. Pat it in anywhere you can get it. Turn on its side if you need to. Put the rest on there. Get down in nooks and crannies on the ends here. And roll it over to the other end. See how much neat surface there is there? You don't want to neglect that. Because that's the cut end of the muscle fiber, and that's what's really going to absorb a lot of flavor. So make sure you get it on there on the ends. And this is what's gonna make that nice crisp. All right, so I've had this sitting out all night from frozen to thawing. And one of the keys to good, consistently cooked barbecue is room temp when you start. You know, we're doing the snake method outside, which I've already videoed, but in order to keep whatever you're cooking it in from getting loaded down when you first put your meat on, you want to make sure your meat is at at least room temperature. Okay, now we're going to take one of these other pans. We're going to fill it with hot water. This is going to be our drip tray slash steam tray. A little bit of moisture in the grill. So you want to get that water as hot as it'll get. Let me fill her up. 
don't have to be full, full about an inch of water in the bottom is fine. But having that water hot when you start, again, keeps from dragging your temps down initially in your grill. So, all right, one more step. We're gonna grab a mixing cup. We're gonna put a cup or so, and three quarters of a cup olive oil in there. Don't cheap on olive oil, buy good olive oil. Um, we're gonna put a quarter cup of vinegar or so. And then if you have any left out of that package with that size, I didn't, I needed all of it. I have another package again, they're a dollar. I usually buy like a whole box of them whenever I get them because you're gonna need it at some point later and you can save it. You know, use this little bit right now and just fold it over. You can use it on a chicken layer or something. Put oh, a couple tablespoons of that in there. Get you a fork. <coughs> Mix that up. And I know it's only day 45, but I'm going to go get a beer. This beer, it doesn't matter what beer, a nice dark beer is good, adds a lot of flavor, but I got Miller Lite, so Miller Lite's what we're doing. There's a little effervescence in there. A little malty goodness. Stir that up real good. And I wanna have one of these, injector kit. Again, don't buy a cheap one. They suck. You can't get anything in or out of them. It clogs up the straw. Buy one with this big needle. Don't buy the little needle job. It sucks. I've been down that road many times. Any kind of spice will clog it right up. So get the big one like this. Thank you to Lisa Hooker for getting that for me. Slavin. Slavin, sorry. <laughs> you knew what I meant. This is a nice one I got for my birthday or Christmas or something, I don't remember, but works quite well. And then you're just gonna to wanna to go through there and about every two inches of this guy, give him a little squirt. And this is gonna put some good flavor down into the meat and take those pockets that may or may not have as much fat or moisture content and you're gonna get them all on a levelish playing field. Now there's a bone in here, so you're gonna have to flip this dude over to really get to the other side. There's a shoulder plate in there. Don't worry if you're making a mess, it doesn't matter. And there's no right or wrong amount. Most of it's gonna seep out as you cook it, and that's okay. But the flavorings and the ability for that vinegar to break down connective tissue in there is going on the whole time and that's what you want all right so now she's ready to put on the grape that's all for today's episode kids